Come ride the little train that is rolling down the tracks to the junction. Forget about your cares, it is time to relax at the junction. Lots of curves, you bet, and even more when you get to the junction. Petticoat Junction. There's a little hotel called the Shady Rest at the junction. Petticoat Junction. It is run by Kate. Come and be her guest at the junction. Petticoat Junction. And that's Uncle Joe. He's a moving kind of slow at the junction. Petticoat Junction. Poster, Uncle Joe. What does the regular slogan say? See Naples and die. Uh, why see Naples and die when you can come to the Shady Rest and live? <laughs> Will you help me, Uncle Joe? Sure, honey. What do we put at the bottom of this one, of the Leaning Tower of Pisa? Uh, why visit a place where a silo can fall down on you? <laughs> come to the Safe Shady Rest Hotel. <laughs> Why are you girls out here when there's a stack of dishes in the kitchen? Well, you help me with my advertising, Kate. Help me grease the wheels of progress. Oh. You see, people spend most of their lives planning to do something, and it takes advertising to make them get up and do it. Advertising gets results. You could be right. Can I try? Well, sure, Kate. Being in my flesh and blood, you ought to have a natural bent for advertising. I knew you'd come around to my way of thinking. There for a while, you was about as narrow-minded as an old maid fishing worm. Thanks. <laughs> Huh, I sure hope this brings results. When are you going to dig that drainage ditch down with the railroad train? <laughs> I advertised. How soon do I get results? Well, now, Kate, I was figuring on getting started at that as soon as my arthritis cleared up. Uncle Joe, you don't have arthritis. Pretty Joe, when a man's not fixing to do something, one excuse is as good as another. I never said I wasn't going to do it. Well, I guess advertising is just not as persuading as it used to be. Well, that ain't true. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'll get started. Oh, you going down the tracks and start digging? No, I'm going to find somebody I can start persuading. <laughs> Say, did Charlie and Floyd do through here on their first run? Uh, you're not going to get Charlie and Floyd to do your work for you. They went on through while you were still asleep. Had to meet Mr. Bedlow in Hooterville. Don't tell me he's back again. Yep, and I sure hope he's not going to stir up more trouble for us and try and close down the cannonball again. Don't worry, Kate. I can take care of Bedlow. He don't scare me none because he's vice president of the railroad. Them city slickers like him's my meat. Then that makes me a vegetarian. <laughs> Mr. Bedlow, what kind of a scheme have you got in mind for trying to close us down this time? One little work. I've got you this time. The defeats and humiliations that I have suffered here in the past will not have been in vain. I'll be able to hold up my head again at the home office. You must figure you got a pretty good angle, Mr. Bedlow. I have, and it's a butte. It's called a spot inspection. You going to inspect the spots on the cannonball, Mr. Bedlow? <laughs> for your information, this spot inspection is going to be an examination of your books. I'll tell you, Mr. Bedlow, what with keeping up steam and looking for loose tires, I don't get much chance to read. I think I understand what Mr. Bedlow means. Go get the shoebox, Floyd. Oh, that's different. You should have said that in the first place. The records down to home office indicate that you haven't submitted a profit and loss statement in over 12 years. That does sound like a Lulu. Doesn't it, though? But the profits usually take care of the losses, and it all comes out even so. Why send in a report when all it's going to mean is just a lot of extra work for you? Well, I appreciate your solicitude, but I'll be the judge. Here you are, Mr. Bedlow. Oh, well, now we're getting someplace. I wasn't top man in my accounting class for nothing, you know. Now, let me see. Mm-hmm. 
August 27th, received from Mr. Phillips four gallons of milk for freight charges. All right. What happened to the milk? We drank it. It was a hot day. <laughs> that milk should have been turned over to the CNFW. Maybe, but it wouldn't have kept. Well, uh, well what about this one? Payment for transportation of Harry Simmons and family. 118 eggs. Where are they? We needed some new upholstering in the coach. So old Mrs. Brown did the work for 118 eggs. But she owed some money to Kate Bradley, so she turned over the eggs to her. Kate Bradley's got the eggs, huh? No, she was overloaded with eggs, so she gave them to Vernon Sizemore, the plumber. And since he owed us some money for freight, he gave us the 118 eggs. All I know is that there are 118 eggs belonging to the CNFW Railroad. And I want to know where they are, is that clear? 118 eggs! 117. <laughs> you want this one? It's sort of used. Range. One egg. I want the other 117 eggs, and I want them now. I'm afraid we haven't got them for you, Mr. Bedlow. Well, just where are they? Lonaka wound up with two dozen of them for helping us fix the boiler. All right, now let me see. That leaves 93. Also, you owe 16 ears of corn and five pumpkins. Now, these things must be accounted for. Where are they? Well, 93 of the eggs hatched into chickens. And they ate the corn. <laughs> we used the pumpkins to decorate the train on Halloween. All right, where are my 93 chickens? I'm afraid they flew the coop, so to speak. Uh-huh. Then that puts you in nothing but trouble, so to speak. This is precisely the sort of thing I knew I'd uncover. I'm reporting this gross infraction of company rules and regulations immediately. <laughs> I want to put in a long distance call to the home office of the CNFW Railroad. And I recommend that the CNFW Railroad purchase 17 general purpose diesel electric locomotives at a total investment of $3 million. This will increase our annual net income a minimum of uh, about a quarter of a million dollars. Mr. Curtis's office. Mr. Bedlow calling from Hooterville. What? Bedlow? You're not supposed to be in Hooterville bothering those people. But, Chief, it's my day off. <laughs> I've uncovered some fraudulent action in connection with the Hooterville cannonball. Simon, you better make that 20 locomotives. And a total of $3,540,000. Increasing our total net income to approximately $300,000. Yes, sir. Go on, Bedlow. What's that? Underhanded skullduggery. They owe us 93. What? <laughs> Chicken. <laughs> and they eat up our corn? Pumpkins. <laughs> Bedlow, are you out of your two-bit tabulating mind? <laughs> Forget about it. And if you come up with any more ideas as to how to close down that line, you'll slip farther down on the list of vice presidents. <laughs> How'd everything go, Mr. Bedlow? Oh, shut up. I reckon things didn't go too well, Floyd. Here's that way, don't it? Mark my words, I'll get that train yet. I have to tear up every foot of track with my bare hands. Now get that mechanical nightmare going. I'm going to ride it until I find a way to wreck it. Right glad to have you aboard, Mr. Bedlow. Yes, sir. Now that'll be 35 cents cash or six eggs. <laughs> I don't blame you for being sore about the railroad losing money, but if you'd come to me, you could be making money. Oh, and just how would that be possible? By getting one of my advertising schemes to working for you. Like this one, for instance. Big silver strike. Dig your way to health and wealth at the Shady Rest Hotel. That's an advertising scheme? You're dang right. It'll pay off, too. Kate wanted a drainage ditch dug alongside the tracks. I'm getting it done by advertising for people to come out and mine for silver. <laughs> Who'd believe a fairy tale like that? Oh, well, lots of people. There once was a big silver strike in these parts. There's silver running all up and down these tracks. The 
not enough to make it real profitable, but a person could come out here and do a little mining, pay for a weekend, get in a lot of good exercise at the same time. Wonderful. I can just see everybody in these parts tearing up the tracks, destroying them. It'll be beautiful. <laughs> Mr. Carson, you're a genius. Always oh, nice to be reminded. <laughs> you may be remembered as one of history's great railroad promoters. I, I'm putting in with you. I like your style. You know something, Homer? You're all right. <laughs> Joe, I got a confession to make to you. I want my intimates I'm often referred to as big-hearted Bedlow. <laughs> yes, sir, Joe, old boy. You're just the man I've been looking for. I'm glad you like my advertising scheme, Homer. Like it? I love it. Just think of those people digging a ditch all the way from Pixley to Shady Rest. But, Homer, I, I don't see where we need one that long. Well, we want them digging it all the way to the hotel. So that when they get tired, they'll stay over, don't we? Well, uh, sure. Well, they certainly aren't going to walk home. They'll ride the train home, and the railroad will make some money, too. Right. Those posters of yours all over Pixley, I got an idea how I might make some extra money for the railroad by dividing up the right-of-way and selling it off to those happy prospectors. Naturally, there'd be a commission in it for you. That's darn decent of you, Homer. <laughs> that way I see it, you got it coming. I appreciate it. You know, Joe, when a man has a chance to build a better mousetrap, only a rat would stand in his way. <laughs> since the last cyclone season. Good afternoon, Mrs. Bradley. I can't tell you how I've looked forward to returning to the glow of your hospitality and the warmth of your heart. I expect the next few days to be the happiest of my life. I wish I expected as much. Give my buddy Homer the best room in the house, Kate. <laughs> Thank you, Mrs. Bradley. He's a fine fellow, Kate. Just took a little knowing. Like the book says... Each man's his brother's keeper. Acting so friendly with Bedlow makes me wonder if you don't need a keeper. What were you doing in Pixley with him? Well, Homer and I just set up a booth, and I put up my posters. What's Bedlow got to do with you and the booth, and why Pixley? Well, for one thing, they ain't as used to my advertising schemes in Pixley, like my latest one. Dig your way to health and wealth at the Shady Rest. Exactly what does that mean? We let it be known there was a vein of silver running alongside the tracks all the way from Pixley to the Shady Rest. A vein of silver from Pixley to the Shady Rest? Yeah. Homer was nice enough to sell the people leases reasonable so they could start digging immediately. Uncle Joe, do you realize what you've done? People won't just dig beside the track. They'll dig up the track itself. Bedlam won't have to discontinue the railroad. All he'll have to do is have it carted away. <laughs> I never thought of that. I was just hoping to put the Shady Rest on the map. He'll be on the map, all right, as a detour. <laughs> what are you going to do? Two things. Number one, I'm going back to calling Homer Mr. Bedlow. <laughs> Number two, I'm going to start another rumor. Another rumor? Yeah, that the first one was started by an idiot. <laughs> There isn't enough silver out there to keep a stick of chewing gum warm. You know it, Mrs. Bradley, and I know it. But by the time those hicks get through tearing up those tracks, it'll look like Lawrence of Arabia came through here. <laughs> Your plan is the most underhanded, most sweet. Certainly. I wouldn't have anything to do with it if it wasn't. <laughs> you should know how much we need the cannonball. The C&FW Railroad doesn't, and I am a C&FW man. 
You're a lot of other things, too. Please, Mrs. Bradley. You're not going to be petty and deny me the enjoyment of my moment of victory. I'm not destroying that railroad out there. Your friends are. And why? Avarice, Mrs. Bradley. The poison that destroys men's souls. Not only they're tearing up the tracks, they pay me for the privilege. Avarice, Mrs. Bradley. Avarice. But those poor people... Now, don't... if you'll excuse me, I'm going to get the best night's sleep I've had since I first heard of the Hooterville Cannonball. At a time like this, I wish I were a man. I'd punch him right in the nose. Maybe I'll punch him anyway. Kate, you just can't believe what's happened. The railroad between you and Pixley is a mess. We made the run to Pixley and back, but it was terrible. As the last wheels of the cannonball passed over a rail, it was tore up. You never saw so many loose ties, just begging to be burned. Did you tell the diggers there wasn't enough silver in the ground to bother with? Well, I tried, but I could hardly make myself heard over the noise of the shovels. Well, did you try to buy back the leases they bought from Bedlow? That idea backfired on us, Kate. What happened? They figured if someone wanted to buy the leases from them, it's just possible there might be a rich vein of silver down there. Just possible there might be a rich vein of silver down there. Oh, no, not you too, Kate. Floyd, you just gave me a great idea. I did? Yeah. How soon can you get the engine hot? Five or ten minutes. Well, it's about... got to be hotter than it's ever been before. You intending to cook something? A railroad vice president's goose. Kate, could I ask you something? Seems my idea is so good. Would you mind telling me what it is? <laughs> Okay, Mom, I think we're ready. Oh, Mom, I hate to see you part with all your silver. Forget it. Uh, this way I can cut down on my polishing. When I think of all the lovely food I've stoked down with that fork, I get a lump in my throat. Now, don't you worry about it. If we don't keep the cannonball running, we're all going on a starvation diet anyway. Can we get a little more heat, Charlie? Any more heat will melt the whole locomotive. Mm. Sort of makes me feel a little like the Lone Ranger. How's that, Mom? I owe silver to the rescue. <laughs> <laughs> Go, he should be right down. And Uncle Joe? He's still sound asleep. I swear, I don't know how he can do it. Mom, the mining engineer that you sent for just came over the hill from the county road, and he's going to set up his equipment right out front. Oh, thank heavens he got here. Yeah, he's cute. Hey, Joe, how can you think of men at a time like this? It isn't easy. In fact, you know, we're in so much trouble, this morning I had to force myself. <laughs> Good morning, Mrs. Bradley. I just peeked out my window and saw all that activity below. It's a beautiful sight. Magnificent morning. Not for us. Oh, come now, Mrs. Bradley. You've outsmarted me many times. Be a good loser. After all, it isn't how you play the game, it's how you cheat. Mom, <laughs> Mom, it's terrible. They've gone berserk. Who, what? What's the matter? It's Charlie and Floyd. They've been up all night prospecting. Oh, no, not them two. This is too much. It's like hitting the jackpot on the first nickel. Well, they'll be coming up pretty soon to have their ore essayed by the mining engineer. Mining engineer? Near where? Out front. Poor Floyd and Charlie. I've never seen them look so wild-eyed and act so ruthless and greedy. Are you a mining engineer? Oh, yes, and I've just come over from the county seat. May I see your credentials? <laughs> Certainly, sir. There you are. Mm-hmm. Seems perfectly legitimate. Everything's in order. Just have to make sure, sir. Round here, I sometimes don't even trust myself. That's the first tolerable thing I ever heard you say, Mr. Bedlow. Charlie and Florida coming up the hill. I can't believe what's happened to them. Oh, I've got to stop them from having their ore acid and making fools of themselves. We hit it, Kate, a big strike. We're rich, rich. No, boys, no, don't make fools of yourselves. Step aside, Kate, you're blocking the way of a couple of millionaires. Yes, son, tell us how much we're worth. Yeah, we want to know if we're multimillionaires or just plain millionaires. 
I'm so glad you couldn't stop that, Mrs. Bradley. I wouldn't miss the look of disappointment on that face for anything. Tell me, do you think they might even cry a little bit? <laughs> a sample of silver ore belonging to you was found up near Pixley, is that correct? Yes, sir. Where did you date? Right in front of the Shady Rest. What distance would you say it was between those two points? About 25 miles. 25 miles? Here it comes. Watch their faces, Mrs. Bradley. Frankly, I was planning on watching yours. If the quality of the ore between Shady Rest and Pixley is similar to the samples I have just tested, I'd say there's at least $25 million worth of silver in the ground. Or roughly, that's $1 million a mile. <laughs> Come on, boys. Be sad. Take it like men. Have a good cry. It'll do you good. And me, too. <laughs> Never in my whole life have I seen... $25 million? <laughs> Did you say $25 million? That's right, sir. There's silver there, all right. I have never tested ore with a bigger yield. You're kidding! No, sir. I'd stake my reputation on it. <laughs> Mrs. Bradley! Uh, Mrs. Bradley, can I appeal to you as a friend? You don't even appeal to me as a stranger. Well, frankly, Mrs. Bradley, I haven't felt well lately, but I'm not the sort of man that goes around doing sneaky, underhanded things. Not unless you're sure they'll work. Well, I deserve that, Mrs. Bradley, and more. Shoot of you, must this old gray head. Mr. Bedlow, you know how much we need the cannonball, and you nearly destroyed it with your sneaky, nasty scheme and meanness. Well, nobody's perfect, Mrs. Bradley, but we're in this thing together. We are. Yes, you need the railroad, and I need to get those leases back. Now, you've got to help me, or... Or what? Or you're going to see a terrible thing. A middle-aged man crying like a baby. <laughs> Would you fix the tracks from the shady rest to Pixley? It'll be a pleasure. The rails will be new and neat and shiny. Increase the pension for Floyd and Charlie. Funny, you took the words right out of my mouth. <laughs> The coach could use some curtains. What color? And Floyd and Charlie need new uniforms. I noticed that. I'll send over my own tailor. <laughs> okay, fellas, you can stop digging. Uh, All right, we get started. We've been took. I just drove in from Pixley, and I hiked over the ridge to tell you to have my ore assayed, and it ain't worth shucks. Oh, oh, that's the way well, coming. look yeah. who's coming. Joe Carson, the Silver King of Shady Rest. Hi, fellas. You look all tuckered out. We are. Any of you be interested in selling your leases for, say, a $5 profit? Yeah. Mr. Bedlow, you keep your end of the bargain, and I promise I'll keep mine. Well, thank you, Mrs. Bradley. But people around here know you, and they love you, and respect you, lie to them. They'll believe you. We're rich, Kate. We're dag nabbed that blasted rich. Well, Joe, what are you saying? I bought a pepper lease between here and Pixley. You didn't. I only had to pay an extra five dollars per lease for him. We can buy all them IOUs back out of our millions. Those are my leases. I'll buy them back right now. And a pig's eye, Bedlow. Listen to him, Kate. He's off his rocker. Uncle Joe, sell him the leases. What's the matter? You falling off yours, too? Sell them the leases. There are leases. Sell them. Never. A promise is a promise. I never made one. I made one for you. Sold. They're mine, mine, all mine. <laughs> Wasn't that the greatest ride to Pixley on the Cannonball Moth? And that new track. It's so smooth. Mm -hmm. Like running your hand over the top of Floyd's head. <laughs> How can you be so calm with Bedlow back in town again? Oh, I wouldn't worry about him, Uncle Joe. Why, because Nutty Norman's with him? Mm -hmm. Mr. Curtis seems to have some strange power over Mr. Bedlow. You know, I don't understand you, Bedlow. You allocate $2,000 to relay this roadbed. And you were the one who wanted to discontinue the line. Yes, but, Chief, I've explained that. We needed to restore this track so that the cannonball could haul the silver out for us. Oh, yes, the silver, yes. Well, get busy, start digging. Oh, but, Chief, this is the 23rd hole I've dug, and we've had that ore assayed in New York and Chicago and Hong Kong, and the report's always the same. Nothing. Dig. But, Chief... Dig! <laughs> Chief, can I ask you something? Well, what is it now, Bedlow? How deep do you want me to go? <laughs> well, is it beginning to feel warm down there yet? No, sir. Then keep digging. <laughs>
Junction. This has been a Filmways presentation.